Hello, this is Abhishek Gard here, and I welcome you to yet another feature from the Capital and TV. In the next few minutes, we will try and decode the evolution of the media tech industry. We are in conversation with Mr. Don Anderson, who has one and a half decade or more experience in many Fortune 500 media technology companies like CNN, ESPN Star Sports, and YouTube. Currently, Don is the founder of Cadadu, where he is focused on building the next generation family brands, creators, and communities. Some of the other roles he plays include being an advisor to ACT Media Ventures and co-founder and board member of Asia VR Association. So moving on, Don, uh, my next question to you is more around NFTs. And in the last few months, uh, we have seen a lot of traction happening here globally again. So can you share a little more insights about how this ecosystem is and how is it evolving from the larger context of media? And what a year it's been. Um, maybe this is an outcome of, and I think it largely is, of our all being locked down globally at different points in time and many markets still in that situation. But um, we probably never heard so much around this space uh, in the last few months or less the last six to eight months than, uh, than previously. But non-fungible tokens or NFTs, it's really a unique, non-interchangeable unit of data stored on a digital ledger, which is the blockchain. Um, that's in simplicity how it's described. So what does that include? That's photos, videos, audio, any other digital items that use blockchain technology to verify proof of ownership. And it's also worth noting because there's a lot of hype obviously in this space and also similar, I would say, challenge in terms of understanding among different stakeholders as to what it means in terms of ownership. Well, ownership of an NFT doesn't necessarily mean you have the full rights to it. It's a bit of a gray area here. Essentially, the artist can maintain copyright. You own the digital version. Um, but NFTs are, above all, able to prove ownership in some capacity. Now, what are the upsides? Plenty. Uh, largely because of the blockchain foundations that are built on. You know, And I would highly recommend everyone do a course on blockchain because Having done this and looked into this a little bit deeper, I can see what this really means to and what, how transformational it will be and can be for all aspects of digital and media. Um, just looking at some of the, the highlights of, of this past six months or eight months. So Yuga Labs, I think that's how they pronounce it. They're the creators of Board H Yacht Club. Their NFT projects have generated more than $1 billion in secondary sales. And that's in six months. You know, they're out of pretty much nowhere. Other opportunities, and I think, again, if you're a startup and you're thinking about this or an investment, uh, you're getting acquainted, ticketing. There's some real upside to this. There's a lot of players that are starting to move and pivot into this space. The opportunity to prevent spot fraud, obviously ensuring tracking. You've got the collectibles, mar collectibles market. Uh, really well exampled or demonstrated by Topps' release of the official NFT baseball cards in April. And they followed up with interesting tie-ins with IP such as Godzilla and Bazooka. Check out their uh, dedicated NFT site. I would highly recommend looking at that and give you a visual idea of what this looks like. Artist designers finally will get paid for their work, which is a really long-awaited advantage. Um, and you're seeing a lot of that on OpenSea platforms, Rarible, etc., of everybody leaning in pretty hard from that space to be able to see if they can find uh, find their own foothold. You've got the fashion industry. They've got into a great fervor of creativity. Louis Vuitton released a mobile game, Louis the Game, to celebrate their 200th birthday of their founder. 30 NFTs embedded through the player journey. Really great experience. There's RTFKT Studio, with its virtual sneaker brand, produced a series of three sneakers alongside digital merch resulted in 600 pairs being sold and sales topping 3 million. And really it was about the, not the pairs of the sneakers, it's about the actual limited edition digital versions. That's the real, that was the real driver. Um, personal profile, community and social cred. I think that is an enormous driver, very much so, particularly with Board 8, Yacht Club, Crypto Kitties, Crypto Punk collections. People knowing are known to buy these at, incredible valuations, hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, millions of dollars actually, to really just showcase as their avatar or icon in uh, social media. 
And then of course, marketing and promotion opportunities. So brands also in the marketing promotion opportunities are jumping in full tilt. You've got Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Nike, Pringles, P&G. They launched an NFT of Charmin toilet paper, Dolce & Gabbana. Um, just looking at Coca-Cola's example, they sold consumers a physical set of Norman Rockwell prints featuring the drink for $400. And they made recently made almost 600,000 US selling four NFTs. Uh, and those NFTs basically were a digital animation of Coca-Cola cooler and a branded digital puppy jacket that your avatar could wear in a virtual reality platform called Decentraland. Um, the physical asset, they also put one that in there too, uh, was basically a refrigerator, refrigerator fully stocked with Coca-Cola. So I think we're going to see that combination of more of the combination of NFTs linked with actual in real life assets. Music industry too, very fast moving in the space uh, and picking picking and choosing where they want to be able to play. Um, again, ticketing, as mentioned, is a big opportunity, but uh, musicians and acts themselves. DJ and music uh, producer Three Lao earning close to 12 million for music NFTs over a 24 hour period earlier this year. Uh, you had singer uh, songwriter Grimes with uh, 6 million in earnings from digital art NFTs. You know, what we're likely to see is an explosion of opportunities for artists to produce exclusive fan content, um, which may not necessarily lead to immediate earnings, but allows them to be able to think of more creative ways to connect with those audiences, which is a lot of what it's all about. Then there are the downsides, and there are many. Uh, it's high risk. It's very volatile. It's all new and speculative. It's susceptible to fraud. You know, you can copy any digital image and make an NFT of it and claim it as your own. Uh, it's becoming extremely crowded with digital offerings. There are more people creating NFT, NFTs today than buying. That will surely dilute the market. And it's also kind of an, it's an asset class that really isn't repeatedly bought and sold, unlike art, physical artworks, at least not yet. Uh, there is some degree of that among a lot of the more popular LM, um, uh, NFTs like Ford Ape Yacht Club, but uh, Crypto Kitties and, 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 and Cyber Cyberpunks. Um, but but really, for the most part, it's you know there's a lot more in there than necessarily being bought up. 